Hi, this is Robbie with Tickner Photography. I had an idea this week to create a picture, kind of like a broken heart. I've had one of those kind of weeks. So the idea is to get a kind of glass heart shaped red and smack it so it cracks and then photograph it on like a black transparent black background. So broken heart kind of floating in space. I don't want to do it with real glass, so I thought I would do it with sugar, candied glass. Hopefully you can kind of see what I want to create over here. In my kitchen, I had a heart-shaped little cake pan. I figured this will be perfect. I'm going to melt sugar up to the hard crack stage, which is about 300 degrees, with a drop of food coloring, pour it in here and let it solidify, and then I should have a heart-shaped piece of red candied glass, which I can smack and it should crack and give us exactly what we need for this picture. I'm gonna get started. We'll fast forward this so you can kind of watch me do this. The key here is just monitoring temperature of sugar. I'll add sugar, food coloring, a little bit of water to my pan, and then heat it up. Typically, I'd use a candy thermometer to get it to 300 degrees. You don't want to get it too high. Bad things happen to sugar when it gets too hot. But since this is going to be such a small amount of sugar, I don't know if my candy thermometer will be able to get in there and measure it accurately, so I'm going to use my infrared thermometer instead. That should work. That's the theory, at least. So let me get started. Infrared thermometer, very useful in the kitchen. Filling my little cake pan about halfway up. I'm not gonna pour this much into it when it's molten, but uh, I'd like to have a little bit more to work with. We add a little bit of water to the sugar. It helps the melting process because the sugar will dissolve into the water. You're less likely to burn the sugar on the bottom of the pan while it's waiting to, uh, to liquefy. And Red food coloring, I'll use about two drops. And that should do it. Since there's so little sugar in here, this will probably heat up very quickly. So I'll give it a shot. I'm also going to very slightly lube this so I can get this out again. So now our nonstick heart should be lubed. Turn this on. So when working with sugar, you can usually stir it until it starts boiling and then you're not supposed to touch it again, otherwise it can pre-crystallize. Uh, Shouldn't be a problem for what we're doing though. So our water came out of the fridge, so it's a bit cold. This should take a minute to get up to boiling. We're already at 110, so we're moving up. Now it's like watching water boil. Isn't this fun? And we're officially boiling. So now the objective is to boil out all of the water, pretty much. The temperature of sugar when it's boiling goes up to about 200 and stays there for a while, and it'll slowly increase to uh, 212 as it boils off most of the water, because water can't get hotter than that. But once you get beyond that, the process goes rather fast. We're now at 214 degrees, so things should start happening relatively quick now. We've lost almost all of our water. All right, clapping quick now. Two eighty seven. There we are, three hundred. And there we go, poured. There we are. So now we just need to let this solidify. It's going to be extraordinarily hot right now, so don't touch. And so after maybe five minutes, this will solidify, and then we'll start, well, I'll extract it from here somehow, and then we'll go start working on our lighting setup and our configuration for the photo. So I'll be back in a minute. All right, and here we are, we have a Candied glass heart. So, I'm going to take this on my plate and oops, hopefully give it a couple cracks. And there we go. We have a broken heart. 
So now let's go figure out our photo setup. All right, so now we're getting ready to photograph our uh, broken heart. I have a pretty simple setup here. I have the candied heart on top of a sheet of glass, and then I have that raised above some black uh, construction paper. That should allow the black underneath it to get a little bit more dark so we can use Lightroom to make it completely black. Um, otherwise, I just have it elevated off the ground so I can access it easier. Right now, I'm gonna try this with just one flash. I have a beauty dish on it just because I think that'll work. I may end up additionally using a speed light and blasting a little bit of light underneath so it shines through the candied glass just a little bit. So I think I'm gonna shoot almost straight down at this at a slight angle. I'll be using the Sony Alpha A77 with Zeiss 24 to 72 8 lens, probably guessing around 40 or 50 millimeters, and probably f14, f16 at 1 250th of a second, so we're at max sync speed. So we can cancel out all of the light around here, make this as dark as possible. Want this emotional. So that's why we're using one light. I'm gonna hit it kind of at an angle, try and make this as emotional as possible. So, I'm going to get started and we'll see what we're able to get. So now I'm, now I'm going to get a speed light under here and we'll try and adjust some light, blast it around. I may shoot a few of these and then put together the pieces of each image that I like the, that I like the best. So. Okay, I think we got something we can work with. We'll move these into Lightroom and kind of see what we get. Unfortunately, one of the little pieces of my candied glass, for some reason, it has a different texture on it. It's opaque instead of transparent. Um, it left a little bit of like a wet spot on the bottom of my pan. I don't know if there was a little bit of oil in there um, that I didn't wipe out. Something was a little bit different with one piece, which is kind of frustrating, but I think we can deal with it. So let's go put these into Lightroom and see what this actually looks like. All right, so here's our heart our glass heart, and I think it looks pretty good. Even the knife marks here kind of are interesting. But you can see how this piece has a different texture than the rest. I kind of wish it was all looking like that, but I'll, once I figure out exactly what went wrong, I might try this again. So here's one edit. Might do a secondary one and then merge them in. Lightroom. Let's see here. That's a bit extreme. Okay, I can put those two down in certain parts. I think that will work. Right, we have these two. So now we'll edit these two in Photoshop, put them together, and see what we come up with. Here we are in Lightroom. Have our heart, layer one, layer two. So layer one, this is a darker color. I'm gonna use this just to highlight. So I'm gonna add a layer mask, invert it so it's basically invisible. I'm gonna grab a pretty big brush that's not very opaque. And we're going to paint a little bit of this. First we'll a little bit in the background. So it lightens it up a bit, it darkens our blacks. I think I like what that did. Just kind of added a little bit extra highlight here and there. Although I don't like it right there. Waste not lost some of our texture in that color. Okay. Now we'll start playing with adjustment layers. Okay, I like this game in certain areas. And I think we're getting pretty close. I need to definitely clean this up a lot. We have spots all over the place, dust that was on top of my piece of glass. 
You know, I actually want to get rid of that. Let's see here what would be the best way to do that. I'm going to put all of our layers inside of a group. Then I'm going to add a background layer that's outside of our group. I'm going to make it black. We'll add a layer mask to our group. And we will paint out certain parts. This should allow me to get rid of this reflection that we were picking up here. This would require some time to do right. This is very quick and dirty, but kind of giving you the idea. So we're basically just painting out to complete black. So it'll blend with the rest of the background. It's a problem when you have things on glass. It reflects everything. You have to be very careful and very aware of the angle of instance of your light because you will be able to see it in a lot of cases. So that's before, after, yeah, much better. Little cleanup here, but that will kind of give you an idea how I created my broken heart image. I hope you found this somewhat useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.